Okay, so in the Enneagram personality system world, Enneagram is an ancient Sufi personality system, there's this big controversy about how maybe some fours are really nines and they're just out of touch with themselves. I don't know, I've had like a few, at least people, you're a nine, you're a nine, how are you not a nine? So anyway, um, and one thing I keep pointing out, and some people very much agree, by the time you're my age, 51, haven't you just been bullied and shamed for acting like a four in public so many times that you figured out to the point where it's second nature never to let that side of you show in public? Well, I, it seems I have. I even managed to marry somebody whose friends and family, about 70% of them bullied me. <laughs> you know, one time uh, his daughter said something very indiscreet. And I burst into tears at the table in front of my husband's beloved aunt, Haiti, and ran from the table. I had to run from the table to not burst into tears in front of all these people, including this illustrious, wealthy matriarch I'd just met. Anyway, um, so this isn't a public space yet. <laughs> and I just sent out a, a, a joking post about on the chat group for this channel about Maybe I should do a video of me crying, but um, it was a joke. I didn't realize I would be crying ten minutes later. Um, so, yeah, sometimes I'm so sad that until my seven fix, fixation, that's what I would call secondary orientation, when I only have 24 people in my Enneagram group, so I don't get to name the terms, until my seven, four, seven, one, the seven part of my triad, kicks into gear with a new idea. Like uh, three minutes ago, I was just lying in the auxiliary bedroom downstairs, thinking maybe I should come upstairs and try to do some kind of reconciliation if there was any chance of that, but asking myself, can you really move? Do you have the energy? And if you don't have enough energy left to get up and move, then what does that say about this situation? How many times have you felt this way since you arrived here? And you didn't say what you said in the perfect way, but you didn't say it in a really hardball way either. And um, somehow I'm the one who's supposed to take all the harsh feedback and do all the change. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is sometimes I just kind of can't move. And my therapist thinks it must mean that the kind of defining trauma for me happened before I was old enough to talk, because when I'm really upset, it's hard to talk. And I feel all my emotions in the fifth chakra. It's a different esoteric system. Not that esoteric. Everybody knows about chakras. And my throat chakra. Or is that the sixth? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's the sixth. And then this is the seventh. And this is the eighth. And some people believe in the ninth? No, that's not right. Whatever. Okay, so here's the crying video. Am I dark and brooding enough to be a four yet? Oh, <laughs> actually, I don't really want to end on that note, because who gives a fuck about that controversy? Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So, um, sadness for me is very, it's not biochemical. It's very situational. And since I'm what we call a social four, my God, the, the, the filling fell off the front of my tooth. And then this was fake for a long time ago. My cousin and I have also exactly the same one. And then just like a year of smoking and a couple years of Merlot. And my God, well, as also, I haven't brushed my teeth since yesterday or the day before. I was too busy making videos and chatting about my videos. So anyway, um, oh yeah, so since I'm a social four, my tears, although I did cry a little bit about my phone and anxiety, but you know, no, my tears are really about, if it was just the phone, I probably wouldn't have cried. It was, oh God. You and I, and you and I, and you and I, and then it was my mother calling me, and then now I don't know where my new $383 phone is. Maybe I left it in the Uber. Maybe I left it on the front lawn, and somebody jumped over the fence and took it. Or it's, it's always about people. It's social, you know. But people think that social types love to socialize or are sociable, and I think that's not true. Sometimes I wish, recently I was wishing that I could live with just nobody else at all, no contact with anybody, but then... How would I have food or shelter or clothing or electricity or whatever? I couldn't figure it out. So back to people. 
No, it just means that you're tuned in to people. Like somebody gets a look on their face and you think, oh, are they mad at me? Do they disapprove of me? Do they think I'm weird? Are they going to give me some kind of shit? Oh, oh no, that was just maybe, you know, they have st a stomach pain or something. Now they're being friendly. Okay. I remember one time in Istanbul, like three nights in a row, the waiter at the, I really like to go to the restaurant in the hotel downstairs and get this stuff with um, pasta and tomato and uh, yogurt um, and lamb. I forget what it's called. And we went out to some really more exotic kind of uh, little little, eat, little little edibles thing one time one night with a, a great local guy named Alper and his girlfriend. Something I said after I said something, his girlfriend didn't talk at all anymore. And it was somebody asked me about my career. And I said about something good that was happening in my career. I try to be very low key about that kind of thing. But you never know what you trigger in other people unwittingly. Like I try to never be like, oh, it's just so great. You know, I always try and sprinkle a little. It was hard. And who knows about next time. But yeah, it was a little success. I'm happy. Anyway, so um, there's this waiter and... Three nights in a row, he was just standoffish and weird. And I was really uptight. And my husband said, it's not about you. It's not about us. It's, it's something in his life. And I was like, you sure? He's awfully standoffish and rude and, and weird. And then the fourth night, he was fine. And my husband was like, see, he had like a pregnancy scare with his girlfriend or something. And I was like, yeah, that must be because he's a completely different guy now. Oh, that reminds me of that waiter in Japan we had. Maybe I think just two nights in a row. We've never we never go, stay anywhere very long, so uh, yeah, because that's my husband's way of doing it. Um, best men's holidays except for Mexico, and never ever stay anywhere for very long. Um, I wanted to stay in Paris longer last time, but anyway. But in Japan, um, yeah, there was this waiter, and he was just so sweet. People of Japan are kind of it's like everybody's kind of feminine, but the women are kind of stereotypically feminine, but with a sort of strong core. So there's like a really, like very yin with a certain, just enough yang thing happening there. But yeah, like you're tempted to think it's a sexist culture because the women are soft-spoken, but then you realize the men are soft-spoken too, and you just feel free to be soft and kind and gentle. And I, that's why I felt so at home there. <laughs> Maybe underneath it all, I'm soft and kind and gentle. <laughs> Who knows? Whatever. Okay. Four with five, four seven one out.